Hi, this is the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Kissing up to crypto. Wall Street now followed by Silicon Valley. Interesting. Google, once banning crypto ads, now loves crypto ads for Bitcoin ETFs and other related projects. Major news magazines are now interested in Solana. I saw Solana in Forbes. Why? What are big players going to do at the end of the month? Why does the end of the month matter in legacy? You're going to find out. That's why Bitcoin has a bid. What are the biggest reasons to buy crypto? Could they have to do with Texas and China? They're like, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In other words, everyone thought Bitcoin was going to 35K or 26K. Mm -hmm. How come it didn't? That's the question you should be answering, asking yourself. And that is the question we will answer throughout this live stream, as well as give you a good roadmap for monthly charts and show you what I've been doing in my Patreon, more on my Patreon in a minute all right let's welcome who's here aiken richard barry first on the stream silas welcome kim night shift in indie rock crypto good evening okay next up news the fuzz crypto okay also i just wanted to make an announcement that this show is brought to you by my Patreon group. Okay, here's the QR code. We've also got other stuff that we can show you. Basically, I have a Patreon group of about 250 people right now. 500 in the free, 250 in the paid section. Getting altcoin calls, the Solana bottom, the render bottom. Five Solana altcoins on a watch list that we are all working on to get better. So you don't get tricked by BlackRock. So you're not selling crypto at 39K and then having to scramble to buy it back. Institutional grade research in the Patreon. Again, more on that soon. Check it out. Okay. Michael is here. Crypto 420. Arokio, welcome. Flying Tiger, cheers. Welcome to the show. Okay, let's go. Let's get going with news. Kissing up to crypto. Google to tweak crypto ad policy, amplify Bitcoin ETF. Okay, well, what I can tell you is. And I love to use the YouTube channel, which I hope you subscribe to because you're watching it. I love to use YouTube as a sentiment indicator. Why is everyone negative crypto? 3,000 views. I, it took me 15 months to get to 4,000 views. Okay. And I've added almost 1,500 people in the last 30 days headed for 6K. Why? Because all I do in these short videos is talk about the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ETF, and here's a, the latest one, crypto investors versus Wall Street. So if I say Bitcoin, if I say Bitcoin ETF, if I say BlackRock, YouTube is just like, oh, wow, we love you now. So the whole entire world is paying you or is paying to hear all about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin ETF. Right. So Wall Street wants in on crypto. And if they don't have enough crypto, you're going to have a very powerful rally on your hands. But make no mistake, they want you to do Bitcoin. Now, they would prefer you do it through BlackRock. I don't care how you do it. I think you got to figure out how to do Bitcoin and Solana. Period. End of story. Kissing up to crypto. Bitcoin ETF ads may appear on Google Monday. Okay. Again, they want everybody in. Solana Dex Jupiter flips Uniswap amid when airdrop frenzy. Okay. 
airdrops are fun, but at the end of the day, I think there's two things on Solana that are going to do well. Solana, <laughs> because the more powerful the network, Crypto Billy is here. Welcome. Make sure you check out his Twitter and his Twitter spaces. Solana is going to accrue the value of the activity on the network. And then I think there are going to be additional meme coins that come out on Solana because it's a question of time before memes go from just pets and silly things into things that are more meaningful, right? And it is a question of time before that starts to impact Solana. Now, of course, Solana DEXs, you know, all the things that make ETH big back in 2020 are going to happen in Solana. And as a reminder, back in 2020, ETH would go up, bore you to death, make you think nothing was going to happen, and then just skyrocket, just absolutely explode. And the same thing could be happening right now in Solana. We could all be sitting here going, well, we were euphoric, right? Again, back to YouTube. Okay. Crypto God candles a month ago. Happy Solana New Year, 1.7K. The Bitcoin ETF is bullish. I barely got to 1.3K. Everybody at the top, this is why I want you in my Patreon and to listen to the market update, but in the Patreon, right? You know, everybody bullish in December, everybody bearish in January. No, 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 no. Okay. U.S. regional banks hopeful for profit revival as pain from Silicon Valley fallout eases. Yeah. That's why the Fed had to set up a special facility to allow banks to borrow and make tons of money. They effectively printed in November after hiking rates for a year and a half. Please. If the Financial Times is writing about a revival in Silicon, uh, I'm sorry, in regional bank profits, there's plenty of reasons to question not only regional banks, but international banks because of what's going on with China. The Federal Reserve is going to have to keep rhetoric dovish and at least do one or two rate cuts to make sure there are no banking system problems in an election year. So they may, they may, they may not lower rates at the pace the bond market ninnies currently expect them to, but there's no question about it that especially with the situation in China and with the situation with our banks, they have to remain at least somewhat accommodative, which is great for crypto. Naturally, you can tell by price action, both in Bitcoin and the stock market, that the banking system still could be a concern because the dollar in stocks is better than a dollar in the bank. Stocks are making new all-time highs. And I don't understand why everybody was selling Bitcoin at 40K. A dollar in Bitcoin is better than a dollar in the bank. I mean, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is making a new high. Microsoft is worth $3 trillion, and Bitcoin is still 40 to 50% off its all-time high. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And everyone's bearish now. Fed rate cuts. A strong U.S. economy makes for a worried decision on the Fed. Not if the banks in China blows up. Now, that said, they're probably not going to cut rates as much as people think, but they're probably going to have to remain dovish. Because if they come out and say, well, blank you, we're not, we're not lowering rates, that creates a calamity in an already broken Chinese system and is undoubtedly going to affect our banks. Stay tuned for a quote from Jamie Diamond. Kathy Wood says, ARK has paid its dues. So Kathy Wood and ARK bought a bunch of tech stocks in 2020, watched them skyrocket and then collapse. Right now, she's taking a more trading oriented approach where her philosophy is, you know, fortunes are made by buying low and selling too early. So she, you know, took profits in NVIDIA. She took profits in Coinbase too early. Now she wants to pour a truckload of money into Bitcoin because that's why she sold NVIDIA and Coinbase. Like if you think at the end of the month, Kathy Wood and ARK are going to just go, well, you know, we're going to let BlackRock dominate the Bitcoin ETF. No. 
there's 10 companies who are fighting for that. And the harder they fight, the more people come to Bitcoin and the harder, the harder they're going to fight to buy the Bitcoin supply when people flood in and invest in Bitcoin. Because the situation in Texas, in the United States, is going to make it very clear to everybody at Wall Street with gray hair that the end of the dollar is near more on that. Bottom line, Kathy Wood, BlackRock, they're, they're, you, may, you don't have to like them because they don't like you. <laughs> you don't have to like them, but they're going to need massive amounts of Bitcoin. And if they can't get their hands on massive amounts of Bitcoin, they're going to go after Solana and anything fast moving in crypto or at least the market making desks that they use to hoover up crypto, right? Somebody out there knows that Kathy is out there and is a big buyer along with BlackRock. Okay. Legacy is different now. Now, Twitter blocks a certain celebrity after fake AI videos. Rumor has it that professional American football is like pro wrestling and may be predetermined before the outcome so that we can find out who this individual will endorse in an election. That sounds unbelievable to me, but it does speak to social division and social disorder, which will impact the dollar and people with gray hair. know, which is why I'm telling you, if the dollar goes down, Bitcoin goes to the moon and nobody's going to wait for the dollar to start to go down before they get busy on Bitcoin. So every time they show this individual at a football game, sell the dollar. And if they don't sell the dollar buy Bitcoin, because if this person has to determine election politics, we're in a bit of trouble and I haven't even gotten to Texas yet. Uh, the administration says, uh, bad guys from country A that were using country B, which is friendly to us, I think, were able to attack us and kill three people. So that sounds like a very sophisticated and convenient headline, given that their biggest opponent right now in the endless war narrative is the state of Texas. So naturally, our heart goes out to these people who lost loved ones here. However, I think you can say, question everything, trust nothing, as a, a famous YouTube group would say. Okay? Also, you have to ask yourself, if this kind of stuff is going on, what is the, what is the dollar worth? Speaking of Texas, the state of Texas wants to take on Delaware. Okay, in other words, the state of Texas wants people to come and incorporate in Texas the way they incorporate in Delaware. Now, I did a private webinar today that's in Patreon, right, for premium subscribers, right, where I discuss what is going on with Texas. If Texas reserves the right to not listen to the federal government, then other states cannot listen to the federal government, as, even if there's a change in president. This is going to affect the value of the dollar when people figure out what is really going on and how, because I live in Texas, that Texas means business, even if it is just over symbolic control of a small patch of land in South Texas. The attorney general and the governor mean business. And this is going to affect the value of the dollar. Why? Because Ray Dalio has frequently talked about social disorder being a major part of the American narrative and social change and economic change. Social disorder is tradable in the FX market. More on that on the webinar inside Patreon. Okay. Big Rich talking about render. We got Big Rich and all of his friends and family in to render and Solana at the low. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Appreciate all of his support. Definitely. Hong Kong gets support for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Let me ask you something. Why are they interested in Bitcoin in Hong Kong? Hmm. Could it be because the entire Chinese financial system is insolvent? And Hong Kong being the freer of the free markets over there? And people are all of a sudden like, 
hmm, I think I need some Bitcoin. Or we need a way to get a whole bunch of money into Bitcoin through an ETF. And we need it in Hong Kong. Why? Stay tuned for those charts. Because this is the most underrated, under-talked about. Now, my Patreon people, the, <laughs> I have been pounding the table on this and they get it. And they saw the Evergrande headline today. The Evergrande headline today came out and Bitcoin and Solana went straight up. It took a couple of hours, but they went straight up. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why they want a Bitcoin ETF in Hong Kong and why the biggest flood of money in, in history could be coming or is going to need to come to stem off a debacle. Okay. Google updates reveal AI will read all of your private messages. So they think your money, they think their money is their money. Your money is their money. Their messages are their messages and your messages are their messages. This is why we crypto. This is why we Bitcoin. This is why we live in Texas. Solana's sharp 2023 rally left major cryptocurrencies in the dust. Huh? Is this an educational piece about Solana in Forbes? Hang on a second. Wait a minute. How many people have Coinbase accounts in the United States? A lot. So they're going to start seeing Solana in Forbes. They, they, they messed around with ETH in the last cycle at 3,000 and Solana's at 100. And everyone's like, oh, 100. It's a big psychological level. It's never going to go through 100. Oh my God, shut up. You know what happens when everybody with a Coinbase account whips out their phone and hits the green button on this? Going, oh my God, this is so much cheaper than ETH psychologically. Yeah, don't fade it. I mean, sometimes you want to fade the media. Like, you, you know, you don't want to be like, oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. But if somebody writes, I know this guy. If he writes an educational piece about Solana after Solana has corrected, again, the people who read this article, what are they going to do? I like this to fade the media or to fade humanity. Las Vegas Super Bowl, most expensive ever at $9,800 a seat. Not sure if it's to see the girlfriend of one of the players or what that's all about, but $9,800 gets you 100, roughly 100 Solana, or at least it did this morning. Today is January 29th. 9,000, you know, the Super Bowl in crypto, right? Now, we may have to look at Bitcoin ETF commercials. I'm going to try not to look. But if they're going to pay $9,800 a seat to watch a football game that may have a predetermined outcome, they'd be a lot better off with Solana. China's economy czar presses cities on funding for real estate. Huh. Hi, I'm here from the government and I would like to tell you to lend, lend money to an insolvent real estate sector. Isn't that sound, doesn't that sound great? Don't you love communists? What we are watching is we are watching communists trying to manage a very big capitalist debacle, perhaps the big capitalist debacle ever as their stock market, their banking system, as people lose confidence in Chinese assets. Chinese fervor for overseas stocks is breaking ETF trading. People are trying to get out of Chinese equities to such degree, it's become an embarrassment to the government. And that's important because you know what? They're not going to be embarrassed. I can make fun of these guys, right? But they're not going to sit around at some point and go, oh yeah, we're going to be embarrassed. They're going to pull out the Fed and the ECB's playbook, and you're going to wake up one day, and there's going to be an announcement on Sunday night, which is Monday morning in Asia, that they're coming in with so much printed money to buy hammered assets. Stay tuned to see those charts. IBM to managers, move near an office or leave the company. Looks like these guys got caught with some interesting hiring practices, kind of a PR generated headline to change the company, right? Uh, 
if they want you to go into work, uh, you should go into work. But this whole thing where, you know, they have to announce it in Bloomberg so they look tough, again, tell your employees what to do in a memo, not Bloomberg, really. S&P tops 4,900. Huh. Wow. A dollar in stocks is better than a dollar anywhere. Or so the Mr. Market wants to think. That's fine. You know, remember when crypto was like, oh, equity's got to go to zero so crypto can go up. Well, okay. How about, I don't understand why the S&P is where it is and nobody wants Bitcoin when there's about to be panic buying of Bitcoin from people entering Bitcoin ETFs in Asia and the US. So I look at this and I go, oh, wow, S&P headed for 5,000 in Bitcoin. Everyone's talking about 36K. <laughs> Please. Musk says, first human patient has received a brain implant. We have a brain implant and we need to use those brain implants so people can stop paying $3 trillion valuations for Microsoft and think about Solana right? We need a brain implant in crypto so that people will actually start trading in meaningful ways, in meaningful coins, right? In other words, speculation is great. It helps bring capital into the markets, but there's no reason the S&P should be at 5,000 and crypto should be where it is because the first human that has a brain implant or the first group of humans with brain implants who talk to artificial intelligence, they're going to buy crypto. Are they going to, they're going to trade with the dollar or are they going to do crypto? Ask yourself. U.S. seeks just tough enough response to deadly Mideast attack. Huh. Very convenient after the state of Texas kind of embarrassed the federal government that there's all of a sudden a geopolitical event over the weekend that helps the administration look very presidential, right? Trot out the generals, talk about a response, talk about anything else except for the fact that the state of Texas and 18 other states have told this, have told, you know, the Supreme Court and the administration that they reserve the right to interpret the Constitution the way they do, which impacts the dollar. Solana addresses rocket past 10 million. Analyst targets 140 ready for upward continuation. Be careful about fading the power of the network. All of the ICO manias, all of the DeFi manias, all of the NFT manias on ETH, they wound up accruing value to ETH. That's how ETH got to 4,000. Okay. Just in case you were about to take the crypto ecosystem seriously, forget GameStop. Now there's a GameStop meme coin and it's worth millions. GameStop meme coin launched on Solana and had a $14 million market cap. Now, this is a very important point because what does GameStop represent? GameStop is a, you know, video game resell, a seller of video games, storefront, mostly. Now, they went bankrupt. Everybody was short the stock and a bunch of guys on Reddit decided to gang up, market buy the stock on leverage, and they wound up stopping out every hedge fund with a spectacular rally. It is so easy to issue and trade on Solana, that it is a question of time before coins attached to say, presidents, politics, economics, meaningful topics begin to appear on Solana. Now, is GameStop a meaningful economic topic? Actually, yes it is. Particularly if you were a hedge fund, that had to pay $90 to cover a short that you set at $13. GameStop was a rebellion. Solana may wind up being, yes, it's the silly network, 
but it could turn into the rebellion network with a whole new generation of meme coins. And of course, AI and all kinds of other projects. Okay. Memes are themes. Themes are stories. Narratives set history. Bitcoin goes past 43,000 here on January 29th. Momentum could trigger a $1 billion short position liquidation. Hmm. Well, you know, I'm not sure who or why anybody would be short Bitcoin, but apparently maybe some people did. So they said they were going to get the levered longs and now they say they're going to get the levered shorts. And I think this is stupid. Everyone's like, Ooh, let's go liquidate everybody. No, let's invest and watch out for a tidal wave of money coming from big players who are not price sensitive. Like, you know, does it, does it, an investor in an ETF goes, Oh wow. Bitcoin was at 48 <clears throat> and the crypto ninnies took it below 40 and thought it was going to 36. I can't wait to buy. And all the media in this case wants to write about is who's getting liquidated. Who cares? Who cares? right? So you liquidate a whole bunch of shorts. What difference does that make? That's like nothing compared to what BlackRock and Kathy want to do, right? Now, here's something interesting. Uh, <clears throat> not totally sure what to make of this. I got to be honest. This is called risks to the view. Bitcoin whales boosted coin stash by 3 billion in January, right? While Bitcoin ETFs have experienced, you know, 820 million of net inflows, Bitcoin whales increase holdings by about $3 billion. Okay. I think that means whales have been selling, right? Bitcoin whales have been selling. Okay. Actually, no. Crypto whales accumulated $3 billion. I apologize. There were stories about whales selling, saying, okay, it's an ETF. It's over. I think that that's wrong. People, are probably accumulating Bitcoin because they know that the legacy players are going to do forced buying. People invest in that Bitcoin ETF, their social disorder in the United States. And like I said, so yes, whales did sell and push it down and they probably sold right into the hands of BlackRock, right into their hands. And if you sold into BlackRock as well, who cares? Jump on the Patreon and get in how Coinbase earn makes staking simple. Huh? What happens if everybody discovers that they can buy Coinbase or ETH or Polkadot and drop it in and get three or 5%? What happens? Okay. Presidential candidate pledges to end efforts to move towards a CBDC. Okay. Elon Musk and go blank yourself seems to be spreading. I don't want your CBDCs. I don't want your, uh, what are they calling it now? Uh, biodiversity and these farmers in Europe. I don't want to eat bugs. I don't want to have a social credit score. I don't want to be told that I can't eat steak. I don't want to be told these things and I'm going to push back now. It is happening. It's happening. Jim Cramer isn't always wrong. Inverse Cramer ETF to shut down. The ETF to aim to make money from investors shorting Mad Money's stock tips will close. Well, in case they haven't noticed, even if, first of all, it's hard to talk on TV every day and be accurate. I do a daily podcast in Sixth Street Crypto. I've done okay so far. It's not easy to talk every day. It's almost like trading coaching. Now, if you're picking stocks in an up only market, I mean, stocks went down all of last year and then turned around and went up only, you're not going to make a living shorting stock picks in an up only market. Again, it's fun to fade people sometimes, but is the objective in crypto to do the opposite of whatever Jim Cramer says about Bitcoin? Or is it to focus on why you're buying Bitcoin to begin with? In other words, 
Why do you crypto? Why should we crypto? Oh, wait. Speaking of why should we crypto? China halts restricted shares lending amid market turbulence. Huh. The Chinese Regulatory Commission is suspending the lending of shares in an effort to curb short selling. In other words, let's put lightning in a bottle. Mr. Market wants to sell Chinese equities and Chinese everything. So let's just prevent people from getting short. Yeah, that's going to work out real well. The only thing that works out real well is the central bank coming in with the heavy, heavy wood and printing money and draining the, the distressed securities onto their balance sheet. So I wish the communists good luck with this. It's not going to work. And they're going to have to come in and they're going to have to come in big. And it's probably going to be a coordinated effort because you cannot have a collapse of a capital markets the size of China that have banking and real estate connected to it, right? Yeah, their stock market is not like our stock market in terms of societal importance. But if a bank craters or if confidence in the government starts to drop, they're going to do something. And every time you have downward price action or you have negative news out of China, like you did on Sunday, magically Bitcoin's up 3% the next day, we'll go through it. This is the biggest untalked about story in crypto. Okay. CFTC warns AI cannot pick your next crypto winner. Well, AI can help you. Bots are interesting. I got an idea. How about you use it all? How about you get some research from your favorite humans and use whatever technology tools you can find, right? You know how you get a hundred X or a thousand X? You start out by picking 20% and 40% winners on a daily and weekly basis. And then eventually you'll get in there and you'll find the hundred X. They're out there. They're going to be on Solana. You're just going to have to sort through a lot more stuff. Bitcoin range consolidation sets the stage for Solana, Avalanche, Render, and SUI. So these could be your four big coins for the next cycle. I don't know if Avalanche is going to start buying meme coins. I don't know if mindless meme coins is going to work anymore, but Render sure is. Okay, that's a big venture capital coin. So is Solana. And SUI reminds me of ETH in the old days of DeFi. You're trying to bring DeFi back on SUI, and I hope it goes to the moon. I think they're having problems with like a dollar thirty, a dollar fifty. But man, you can see people want this stuff. They want this thing, right? Can you imagine the return of DeFi to crypto? Oh my God, people thought it was dead. Bitcoin mining boosts the transition to renewable energy. Huh? You mean Bitcoin? figured out the market, the market for Bitcoin, the Bitcoin market figured out how to move towards renewable energy because that's what the market wanted. Wow. That's kind of cool. Market economics, Bitcoin improves its image by going renewable. Oh my goodness. The government delays a decision on grayscale BlackRock spot ETF. They can't get enough of ETF fixation, right? The fixation for the ETF is the number of people that are going to come in and buy Bitcoin through that ETF. This keeps the media busy. Yes, it would be great for ETH if they had an ETF, but I would actually prefer they keep their hands off of it because once they do ETH, they do everything, right? Like, let us do crypto ourselves. Okay, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF gets to 2 billion AUM. The fund now holds 50,000 Bitcoins after adding almost 4,300 tokens on Thursday. Word to the wise, BlackRock is not price sensitive. BlackRock is not here to pump your bags BlackRock is here to get a biggest share of the market possible and they will pay any price to get it. 
Bitcoin could go back to the mid-20s, according to a guy that I respect on Twitter. Okay? The former crypto lead at Kathy Wood's ARC is still bullish over the long term. Bull markets can sometimes shake you out. They can shake you out and make bullish people bearish. Now, is this guy smart? Yes, he's pretty smart. And, you know, I can always acknowledge that other people can be right. But, but, in the event that the Bitcoin train leaves the station and it doesn't go down, in other words, according to him, it should go down. It probably should, but it didn't because the big buyers are out there. I like this. When token plummets despite burning 27% of supply. Okay. So I'm I'm very happy that you got a lot of buzz around trading on Solana and airdrops and things like that. I think the value on Solana as I said will be Solana and memes that mean something. Right? Because if you got something to say, you can say it using Solana. If you got something to say, okay, Solana is a phone company and it may wind up being a free speech platform because again, look what GameStop did. That's a two or three year old meme that was able to be revived. A meme about what? Rebellion against hedge funds. China Evergrande liquidation. What's next for the indebted developer? Ah, wow. So a Hong Kong court uh, uh, orders China Evergrande to completely liquidate all of its commercial real estate. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder who the buyers are going to be, particularly when there's no bid for Chinese equities. How is there going to be a bid for Chinese toxic real estate unless somebody prints a truckload of money and buys it all or most of it? or injects money into the banks that have lost money. Again, interest in Bitcoin, a flood of money, the most under talked about story in crypto, except in my Patreon. Speaking of my Patreon, I see T-Bone in here. Welcome, big promoter on Twitter of my work. And I appreciate that. British Columbia in the house, baby whale from Texas. What's up? What's up? Okay, T-Bone says, did anyone catch that BlackRock doubled down on its marathon digital Bitcoin mining position? Don't go anywhere. That chart's coming up. Don't go anywhere. Okay, don't go anywhere. T-Bone asks, how much will crypto deviate from the S&P this cycle and afterwards? People right now with a looming drop in the dollar and most likely a change in the administration and a fed that's just cannot tighten anymore. I don't know, man, if stocks don't stop, crypto can just follow stocks is a great question, right? So Bitcoin is trying to trading like stocks. Now it goes up, they shake everyone out. They make people a little bearish and then it just, starts to climb the wall of worry, which again is a recent title of a podcast in Patreon published this weekend to get people into the rally. Seriously. I mean, it is trading like legacy now because legacy players are huge. Nichols says Max Payne is to the upside. Crypto Billy says there's a movie on Netflix about GameStop. It was great. Yes, it is. And frankly, folks, Thanks to the state of Texas, the rebellion is on against the empire. Okay. Flying Tiger talking about Jupiter as it relates to certain things. There's a solar eclipse coming in April, a massive GAN event. Oh yeah, by the way, you're going to be able to see that eclipse from, that's right, from Texas. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to PowerPoint next. Let's keep the momentum going. Here we go. PowerPoint. Okay. Just as a reminder, this PowerPoint presentation 
is brought to you by my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash unhinged crypto, altcoins, and get the tops and the bottoms, plus the major themes that are going to drive the market because this is not your dad's crypto cycle from 2017. This is a different story. Now, again, we got the Solana bottom using a linear regression channel and don't laugh the full moon friends and family into Solana, January 24th. Now things in technical analysis happen in three. So if you're new, you, you're like, okay, I'm going to listen to this guy because I don't know anything or you think you're stupid. You're not, you're not. There's no such thing as an expert in crypto or in TA because every day it changes. You have to adopt every day. Now there are some things that can be helpful, like things happen in threes. Three is a big number in nature and a big number in TA. So here is the entire history of the dollar index, right? The dollar index is like a group of, it's like a, it's like an index or a number that reflects the value of the dollar against a whole bunch of currencies. So here's 1985 where people were okay with the dollar dropping. Literally, that's what government said. The dollar is too strong. Mr. FX market, please take the market down. Here's huge dollar drop number two, as people developed an appetite for overseas assets. Here's dollar drop number three, off the fact that we owe a lot of money and the only answer to a debt crisis is to devalue the currency. That and the political trouble and the political divisiveness, I have said this on the market update for probably a year that the United States of America is ungovernable because of the division that we have in this country. It's ungovernable. They can't get anything done. And all anybody wants to do is fight each other. JP Morgan, CEO, Jamie Dimon, who is very easy to make fun of in crypto says the U S economy is speeding towards a cliff as debt continues to mount. Huh? So what do you think Jamie Dimon knows about debt? Does he know that JP Morgan could be exposed to problems in China? Whoops. How many big banks are exposed in the United States to colossal problems in China? Why is the fed printing money in November? Is there a problem with the U S banking system? Why did the fed go from tightening to cutting rates on a dime. Well, there's gotta be a reason. And you know what? Jamie knows what it is and he just warned you about it. And this is why we crypto galaxy digital, a hedge fund run by Mike Novogratz who formed a crypto hedge fund when forming a crypto hedge fund was a joke. As it stands, galaxy digital has formed an accumulation cone from Jesse Livermore who studied this pattern in the early 1920s came from his notebook. And this was like the prelude to some kind of parabolic run. Galaxy digital went up and everyone decided to sell galaxy digital because investors reallocated money from one stock into the Bitcoin ETF and these stocks were given up for dead. The all, the all time high in galaxy is over 25. And the stock was trading at eight, three days ago. They, they left it on the side of the road. And if it goes parabolic, it's going to go above 13 and beyond. How the hell do you think all these big players are going to buy all this crypto and all the Bitcoin ETFs and all the Solana that they're going to need? Who the heck do you think has been buying all this stuff for uh, months, maybe even two years? That would be Mike Novogratz, right? That he was on Instagram with a cowboy hat. What do you think his position is? Coinbase given up for dead. Turns out if you look at a two week chart of Coinbase, this is pretty simple. This was a base. They broke out. They came back. They retested it. It looked horrible for four weeks. And now all of a sudden Forbes is writing about Solana. Oh, hmm. Is that going to result in business at Coinbase? Oh, oh, I think so. Because how long is it going to take for people to buy Solana and then get interested in a phantom wallet? They can do Solana right now.
and then get to the phantom wallet at some point. So can you imagine when they go from Forbes to Solana and then from Solana to phantom? Oh my God. Just like they went from Coinbase to ETH from ETH to MetaMask. All right, people, this has happened before and it's happening again. Marathon digital. Oh my God. Two years from now, how do you think all these players are going to get all this Bitcoin that they need? They're going to buy it in the open market? No. They're going to have to take over a company. Now, Marathon Digital, okay, was a crypto-related equity that got sold because big players just moved huge amounts of money around in terms of their crypto investments. So it went up to 20, it went to 30, and then crashed back to 16. And what did that mean? Nothing. It just meant that there were more sellers than buyers after the ETF. And now we can go back to business. So $16 was a big point in Marathon in 2021. Okay. It was a big point in 2022. It was a big point in 2023. And looky, looky, it bounced off 16, which also happened to be an important diagonal line. Where's Marathon Digital going to be in a year? Where's Marathon Digital going to be if the S&P 500 takes out 5,000? Where are they going to get all this Bitcoin from? They're going to have to start taking over mining companies that have got Bitcoin on their balance sheet, for God's sakes. And everybody is selling. It's not like I'm coming in here after something is mooned and go, oh, buy it after it's mooned. No, buy it after it's collapsed. Not investment advice. Just as a reminder, the Bitcoin ETFs are a force of nature. Okay. ETFs have got 25 times what El Salvador had and 40% of micro strategy. And this tweet is 10 days old. Bitcoin, they broke out above a diagonal line on the daily chart. They took out the bottom of a regression channel. They stopped everyone out. They made it so hard to be long and then they just took it up. Here's the Bitcoin daily chart. You know what they just did at 40K? Exactly what they did at 16K and 20K. They took it down to 20K and they left it below 20K for six months. He said, you know what? Here's Bitcoin. We're going to leave it here on sale. We're just going to dump it into the sale bin. No one touched it. Now everyone's like, when's it going back to 16K so I can buy? Never. Bitcoin goes back to 16K. It's the zombie apocalypse. Here, they dropped Bitcoin below a linear regression channel. So note, you know, they tested the top, they went through the top, and then they probed the bottom. And they left Bitcoin down here for one, two, three, four, five days. You got five days to get Bitcoin at 40 or lower, and you they didn't. Now, if you didn't, so what? Now what? Let's get in Patreon. Let's figure out how to get involved. Honestly, but again. Bitcoin at 42K is not expensive. And this was a giant stop fishing exercise orchestrated by people who need to buy your Bitcoin. ETH looked horrible this morning. They did a great job. The market was going up and they still figured out a way to make ETH look horrible when I looked at this market this morning. Now ETH recovered. It's back above 2280. And if it stayed that way, I'd be happy. But they have a great way of making you go, oh, I looked at this chart. I'm like, oh, my God, is this thing going to break the bottom? They were selling ETH this morning. I'm like, oh, no. I Even I said it. It's natural. Stan Druckenmuller, major hedge fund player. He will tell you, you. You will look at your positions and go, oh, my God, I should get out. You will do that. that that's, you know, people don't go, oh, well, you know, it's going down. I don't care. No. Your reaction is, oh, my God. That's understandable. That's why you buy research. Bitcoin monthly. Okay. A story that I went into in detail in the private webinar, which is in Patreon. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm going to keep it really simple. We are living in what I call a reverse FTX. In FTX, they did two months or they did a major short squeeze in Bitcoin before they dropped it for two months. I'm sorry, three months. In this case, it's a very similar type of DeMarc work where this month was your chance to get in when they were absolutely killing this thing because the same type of candlestick back in 2022 
was your chance to get out. And it was very hard to tell people to get out because they kept buying it, buying it. And everyone's like, oh my God, it's going to the moon. And I'm like, oh my God, it's not. We're doing the same thing over here in reverse. Reverse FTX, Solana. Okay, again, this DeMarc work is explained in the webinar in Patreon. Bottom line is halfway through a new trend, you usually get a dip to buy. Pretty simple, right? Solana, December, it came off its high. Okay, January, they gave you a dip below 80. You know, ETH bottomed at 80. Can you imagine saying, oh, you know, people are saying, oh, I missed ETH at 80. I can't believe I missed ETH at 80. People are going to be saying, oh my God, I can't believe I got bearish Solana at 85. Or I thought there was something wrong with Solana. When all of Coinbase is about to hit the green button on this thing. Total crypto market cap. Worst case scenario, you got two months of consolidation. But this is still a rounding bottom and they can still add a full trillion to total crypto market cap. Altcoin market cap, total three, right? So it's without Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's only worth $500 billion. So the entire altcoin universe is worth $500 billion. Web3 is $500 billion and Microsoft is at $3 trillion. Now, this is a key level going back to 2021. Again, I went into all kinds of detail in the webinar. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is tech stocks are wildly expensive and everybody has left, I don't know, Bitcoin. I'm sorry, Solana, Avalanche, right? All these up and coming altcoins, right? The ones connected to the Bitcoin ordinals, right? Ondo, Mav, Peas, a micro cap. I helped the Patreon guys get into. Are we saying that real world assets on the blockchain and mobile phone networks that work through crypto are worth less than half or a quarter of one stock? Wow. Okay. You know, everybody who's afraid of buying really needs to think about this because I can tell you right now, there are people in legacy who think just like that. They're like, wow, you know, this stuff's really cheap compared to Solana on a four hour chart. Okay. So if you're watching this three or four days from now and Solana is still above 93, then you're cleared hot for either 107 or 138. If Solana takes out 107, it's probably going to make a new high. If Solana doesn't and falls back below 93, well, then I guess the market is back to this like whole sideways thing. But again, I think the most important thing is that if Solana does not go back down below 93, then the market is making a statement. If it goes back down below 93, it's like, okay, whatever. You can't make too much out of a crappy consolidating range. But if you're watching this three days from now and Solana is above 93, or you're watching this a week from now and Solana is above 107, forget about it. Okay. Forget about what this thing can do on the upside. Cause again, the, 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 the coin like ETH Solana can monetize the value of the activity on the network goes to the layer one that the network is running on. So if this thing does not go back down, it's not going back down. I know that sounds a little silly, but again, where is resistance in Solana really? Where is it really? Well, on a monthly chart, these dotted lines are drawn by an automated quant system. So uh, 175 is one number, 110 is another number on a weekly chart. Solana goes through 110, eh, what's there to stop it? Nothing. 140 and 175. GMX. Possible Wall Street on the blockchain trading infrastructure play. Teacup, handle, just the worst looking chop I've ever seen. They ran stops below this low. People, you're not too late. You're not too early. You're right on time, people. You didn't miss anything. They cheapened everything up nice for you. Okay, so you didn't get to buy Solana at 12. Who cares? 
you know, when you missed eight ETH at 80, did you care that you got in at 320 because it went to 3000? I, I mean, you've missed, you look at this, you've missed nothing. Okay. Avalanche. Yes. Avalanche did go from eight to 48, but then nobody wanted it at 28 at the bottom of a regression channel. And you know what? It's still close down here at 30. And if they dip it, I don't know. These guys are going to try to compete with Solana and they have security token functionality. You know, I, I, I was playing around on Twitter and people are starting to question real world assets, security tokens, you know, just because it doesn't happen like right this second, it is happening. Like I work with a group that's got real assets on the blockchain, just that people haven't gotten interested in it yet because, you know, we're having too much fun with, with memes and themes, which is fine. Because the rebellion is on. I'm okay with it. But eventually, Wall Street's coming over to crypto. Like right now, Wall Street's doing Bitcoin. And then when they're done doing Bitcoin or they're, they're all in and their Gen Z customers want crypto, guess what? They're going to do crypto and they're going to tokenize stocks and other assets because Gen Z doesn't want to have a Charles Schwab account. Gen Z wants to have a crypto wallet. They don't. They, they, they don't want to do whatever their parents did. They want to do their own thing. Now, let's talk about China. Let's talk about the tidal wave of money. S&P headed for 5,000, right? U.S. stocks straight up. Chinese stocks straight down. Straight down to the point where it's getting embarrassing. This is the Chinese domestic stock market. Uh, for the month of February, you will have double DeMarc bottom signals. So if the Chinese were ever going to do anything, and believe me, they are going to do something. They're going to do it probably in February. And they're either going to come in and do like what the Bank of Japan did, and they're just going to print money and buy the whole market. Or they're going to do some type of rescue package that's going to be just a print-a-thon. Or banks are going to start failing. Look at this. FXI is like the biggest Chinese companies in China traded out of Hong Kong. This is an ETF for Americans. Now, when you have a DeMarc 9 bottom, so this is down only, DeMarc 9, stalemate, and then rip up. So this is the bottom that they want in China, but they're not getting it. They got a green candlestick, but nobody was willing to pay higher prices for Chinese stocks. You must be, you, I know you're sitting there going, is this guy for real? 50 minutes into a live stream and we're hearing about a flood of money coming from China as the thing that ignites crypto or risk assets in general. Yeah, man. Because these guys are in trouble, right? This company Evergrande is massive. And if stuff has to be sold at the market or doesn't move at all, maybe they just ignore the court ruling. That seems to be popular these days. Just ignore it. Okay. BitBoy Al is here. Huckleberry Native, welcome. Welcome to the show. Baby Well says, Solana, the phone company. Can you imagine? I mean, it, 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 would, it would never stop. Let's check the market on the, on, and try to do some live TA. Okay, here is Solana versus Bitcoin. Okay, if they can't get their hands on Bitcoin, they're going to get their hands on Solana. Okay, any particular reason why Solana can't do another run like this? Nope. Nope. Not at all. Okay, let's head over here. Okay. Mav, notice the bearish chart pattern didn't work. Okay, this is a possible what's next. Okay, Ando, 45-minute chart. Okay, just a word, and I'll give you this about altcoins. The more volatile the altcoin is, in the short term, in my opinion, the better it is for the long term. Markets are battling out who is going to make it for the next cycle. 
naturally you want to be tuned into Patreon to find out, in my opinion, which altcoins are going to make it. Look at SUI. Look at this thing, right? This is a linear regression channel on a four hour chart. And this thing is like, who cares? Who cares? We're taking it up, right? I mean, how high can they do this? Should you FOMO into this? Well, I can't answer that. Only you can answer that. I think this is ETH of this cycle, at least for DeFi. But look at what we have. This coin was is not brand new. This is a rounding bottom. And this is how I'm leaving it. This is what a rounding bottom looks like. When you have the bigger the base, the higher in the space, a rounding bottom is a base. You have the bigger the base, the higher in the space. And if you learn something from equities, okay, learn this. First, the small caps move. The small coins move. Then the big coins start to move like the small coins or the big stocks start to move like the little stocks. So this is total crypto market cap on a daily basis. Here is a base. Okay. How does a market behave when it goes the bigger the base, the higher in the space? So total crypto market cap, just getting going here, just getting going. And let's take a look at what SUI did after it broke out of its base. I just show it. There's total and there's SUI. Can you imagine total crypto market cap doing this? Like this leg? Like that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana going bonkers. If SUI can do it, the little caps, the little coins lead the big coins in terms of the style of price action. Think of it like a style of clothing. Okay. Rami, I appreciate the love there. Definitely appreciate the love. Okay. The final, final word on the Patreon. Let me tell you what the Patreon has become. Obviously, a community has built up, and I'm almost what I'm trying to do is impart everything I know about crypto and macro, and if necessary, the two together in daily and nightly talks, along with altcoin picks and charts. So I'm giving you almost like what I would call a personalized crypto podcast for people who want to make money this cycle. Every day is a new game plan. Watch the market update, subscribe to the channel, like this stream, join the Patreon. We'll see you next week.